Hi, everybody. My name is Mike Manning. And I'm Trinity French. And we are your business coaches at Wired to Change. With the number two. We help you get your business to the level you want it to be so you can enjoy the life of a small business owner. And what a life it is, Mr. Manning. Now, let's recap last week to this week, Trinity. Last week, you came in topless. I did. How are you doing today? I rolled in here topless. (laughs) Um, Today, I came in with my top on. Okay. I am going to be going out to do some showings after this, also with my top on. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, Does that, well, I don't know, would you be able to sell a house quicker? Probably, I feel okay. like I feel like going topless is usually yeah. the way to really lure lure them in. Okay. And you told me today you got a little uh, blowback from the hubby. I did. I did. Um, Scott. Scott, we love you. Thank man. you for coming after me with a fork. <laughs> listening, he was listening to the podcast this morning, and he was not a happy camper with the fact that I admitted to liking Carolina yeah. basketball. We'll get to that in a minute. Introduce our guest, and then I'll put it in perspective. So, today's show is going to be super fun. We have a very, 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 very exciting and special guest, Mr. The One, The Only, Tom Adams with iWatch Security. For those of you that are unaware of this, if I have not mentioned it yet, um, Scott was very adamant about us getting a security system, especially prior to COVID because I work from home and a lot of break-ins happen during the day. And he wanted to make sure that I was protected since I was home alone a lot. And so we like called Like somebody's going to be dumb enough to mess with you. And you know, <laughs> they just might not have known it. And they get what's coming <laughs> to them then. <laughs> so we called up Tom and he came over and, um, we just have had an amazing experience with you and your company. So we want I want to personally say thank you as a client of yours that you guys do an awesome job. Well, you're welcome. Thanks for having me today. Now, we're later on, we're going to get into customer service. Would you like to tell Tom about the young man that came by your house trying to sell you security? Oh, and that interaction? yes. So this guy comes by the house and um, Scott, I think was already outside. So, um, kind of perfect for, yeah, Yeah. perfect for somebody that is, you know, moseying around a neighborhood trying to do cold calling and door knocking. And he moseyed on up to Scott and Scott is, he's a buyer. Like, you know, like he's the person that you, you do not want me outside because I'm going to shut you down in two seconds. Scott is going to actually give you the time of day and listen to you, which he did. And he came inside and he's like, oh my gosh, this guy's pitch is like really, really good. (laughs) And I was like, well, there's no way that we're ever leaving. I watch. I was like, but make sure you get that kid's information. He was like, yeah, he's like, I would totally hire him as like a salesperson because he was doing such a good job. He's just selling for the wrong company. Very nice. Yeah. yeah, but we I protected you. Would love his information. Yeah, I'll pass it on. Awesome. Yeah. I, f- I was like, you just never know when you might need a good new salesperson. Yeah, absolutely. And it's not all the time you're overly impressed enough to get a name and number. Well, what really impressed me is that he had come that first day, and then he came back through the neighborhood and did follow-ups with everybody, which is impressive because a lot of times people don't come back. Yeah. If you even, you know, like Scott had showed, you know, no, he didn't say no outright because he has a hard time probably saying no to other, well, that's why he married me. He yes. didn't say no, he, but he's not allowed to. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that kid, and he was a pretty young, young gentleman and he came back and I was just like, wow, he is really booking it, trying to get out there and sell some of these security systems. And you got to hoof it. I mean, you, you got to. Sometimes that's just what you got to do to gain more clients, but um, we are very happy with our service and with Tom, and we're awesome. excited to have you on the show Thank today you. because again. you are um, one of those people that your reputation preceded you, and I heard nothing but amazing things about Tom Adams from multiple people before we even got to meet face-to-face, which and is awesome. Same welcome. thing that happened you're with welcome. Mike. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Back in the day before Mike and I became partners, I can't, I think I had five or six different people telling me, you have to meet Mike Manning. You have to meet Mike Manning. He's amazing. He's the most well-connected. He's, you know, on his game. And then lo and behold, here we are. So Tom is also a member of our BNI group, Business Networking International. Um, he is a proud dad. Yep. He has a beautiful wife. Oh, I was just telling yeah. him that she's smoking hot. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> hello, Rochelle. <laughs> <laughs> 
Is she Hopefully gonna listen? Do you think? Uh, yeah, well, she'll, she'll listen, listen, of course. Okay. Yeah, yeah. She, li- she listened to the last one we did. Uh, hi, Rochelle. Good to talk to you again. I love the story of you two meeting, and we'll get to that during the show. Okay. But you guys have a great meet, cute, and still married story. Yes. A lot of people meet cute and yeah. it doesn't last. Right. You guys have a wonderful story, but we will get to that. Speaking of customer service, we will get to that. <laughs> Yeah, and other than being the VP over at iWatch, um, you also do some things in the realm of giving back to the community. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? So uh, we've got a few different organizations that we will contribute to. Um, We like to give back. It's always been uh, a vision of mine. And even before I got to iWatch, my business partner has always been somebody very proud to give back. We do a lot with uh, Raleigh Crime Stoppers. I serve on the board with them as a, a VP, so we try to help facilitate fundraising, uh, getting money in the hands of tipsters that can help solve crimes here locally. And it kind of goes hand in hand with what we do as we protect families and businesses. Um, We do a lot with the Duke Children's Hospital. So for employees that purchase security systems with us, we give back a certain donation in their name to the children's uh, Duke's Children's Hospital. Uh, We've done some stuff with Underground Railroad as well. um, And that helps uh, stop sex trafficking here in in between the 85 and 95 corridor. That's a big problem here in North Carolina. So we try to contribute to that. Uh, And throughout the years, there's been various others that we have donated to uh, as well. Those are just kind of the short list of stuff we've done recently. Well, I know that I've been to one of your Crime Stoppers events and it was it was awesome. Um, I was very impressed, met some really cool people. Also, just a great cause to come out and support and be a part of. So, yeah. definitely appreciate it. I can't wait till we, we can get the, back yeah. to that. We were at the same one, and I met the guy who was a longtime city councilman. Yes, that was John Odom. Great yeah. storyteller. Yes. I mean, he had me just the whole time I was here. <laughs> we were talking about stuff. I'm like, yeah. I'm like... Oh, dang, this yeah. thing's going to end. Can yeah. you keep talking? Yeah, yeah. yeah. good stuff. He's he, a uh, great guy, and he's uh, actually the one that uh, brought me into Raleigh Crime Stoppers. I uh, just happened to be at a shop local Raleigh event and uh, met with him, and he kind of started talking about it. I showed some interest. Next time I met him, he said, we're going to, you know, spark this thing back up. I think he started uh, that through um, the Greater Merchants Association mm-hmm. of Raleigh as yeah. well as shop local Raleigh back, I think, in the 80s is when, uh, when the chapter of Crime Stoppers started. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it's been along for a while. And it's been an up and down type process, right? It's all it's all volunteer and it's all fundraising and donations. Right? So <laughs> it's not the easiest it's not the easiest thing to do. Right. Um, but uh, but definitely rewarding in a lot of respects. Um, so, yeah. With your work history, mm-hmm. we we're talking about customer service earlier. Yep. I mean, we can go back 20 years of mm-hmm. customer service stories. Yeah. yeah. But at the end of the day, it's kind of all the same, isn't it? You know, uh doesn't mean customer service doesn't mean mistakes don't happen it means that we readily admit them we apologize Mm -hmm. we tell them what we're going to do and then we move on right sorry this isn't our way and this is what we do Uh, that's a big part of customer service because we're all human and we're all interacting or managing multiple people and sometimes mistakes happen but Mm -hmm. uh, overall people want to feel like they're heard and they're taken care of and we try to deliver what we promise I think most people are appreciative of a vendor saying that that was our bad. We're going to fix it. Don't worry about anything. It's on our dime. Mm-hmm. And I've told this I do in BNI training that I do. When people are doing their ten minutes, I ask them to tell the story and tell a story. I love the story of when you mess you fixed your own wrong. Right. And a lot of it is if a vendor comes to my house and messed up, mm-hmm. and I called them back, and you guys came out tomorrow morning and fixed everything on your dime. Yeah. Your name's still in my Rolodex. Sure. I got no issues with that. Yeah. But you acknowledged it. Mm-hmm. You didn't tell me I was wrong. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't say look at the contract. You just came out and fixed it. And a lot of people don't get that part of customer service, do they? Yeah. I don't think so. And I think sometimes in certain industries, it's not hard to stand out in that world, right? And then other times, uh, it can be difficult for somebody to readily admit a mistake. Now, my first business partner, uh, way back 20 years ago, that was always one of his things. We readily admit our mistakes. You know, if we make a mistake, we made a mistake. Let's yep. let's stand behind it. And that's something I've always carried with me for over 20 years being in the service industry, for sure. You are all about customer service in the real estate world. I mean, you got to have your knowledge, but I mean, at the end of the day, it's good communication, yep. staying in contact, making sure that everyone knows what's happening. There's 16 to 24 plus parties involved in every transaction. <laughs> so it's coordinating yeah. Yeah. a lot of logistics and people mess stuff up a lot. So I'm most of my job is putting out fires or stopping fires from starting. 
And I think that some of the best aspects of good client service is shielding people from knowing that those things are happening before it gets to to them. I've seen it in the past where people will, you know, go to their client and be like, oh my God, this other agent's being terrible and da 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 da. And I'm not going to bad mouth another agent to my clients. I'm going to just going to make sure that they feel like they're getting really well taken care of. And I'm going to handle all the stress because I want to keep the stress off of them. They're already stressed enough with moving and packing and finding, you know, <laughs> somebody to babysit the dog while they're showings and et cetera. Mm-hmm. So I try to take as much of that off of them as possible. Very emotional transaction. It is very emotional. And I've always thought that I don't agree with the line that the customer is always right, but their issue is Mm -hmm. because it's right to them. That's where the investigative part starts. Mm -hmm. How did we get? And then you kind of talk it through. But at that moment, they're right. In their mind, there's something wrong. And then usually you talk through it. It's like, and they go, Oh, that's right. I did tell you seven o'clock, not six. <laughs> well, raving, raving fans, right? No, there's no, yeah. there's no such thing as a, you know, a customer you can't please, right? Yes. Yeah. It's kind of the basis of a lot of that. And uh, I think for the most part, we do a very good job at that. I think most folks are reasonable. Uh, and when they're not, sometimes you have to reason in a way that you wouldn't ordinarily, but it, uh, it makes people happy. Sometimes you just have to do it. Now, if people can't detect an accent on Tom... They're going to need to listen to the whole show just to make sure it's not from Raleigh, North Carolina. Well, you Tom are, is like me. We've both been here long enough that our accents have sort of melded in with mm, the Southern. It's a Wake Forest accent. Um, <laughs> Northern Wake Forest. <laughs> Northeast Wake County. I like that. I like that. You grew up in, in New York City. Uh, long Island. Sorry. Yep. Long Island. The All I can think is place. New York City. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the ultimate place of people just telling everybody else what they think. So where did you learn customer service? I was in the service world since the age of 18. Um, so I had a, and that was my boss and then became my business partner. I mean, um, that's all we ever did was customer service. Mo- that, and that was the painting business. I was spent 21 years in that business. With paint job of Long Island. Yep. Right? 1-800 paint job of Long Island. Yep. And that business, you know, most folks didn't know the difference between a great paint job and a good paint job but they knew how they felt and they knew the experience that they had. And that was what made us the highest, you know, paint company in town because we provided all of that stuff. Our guys drove in uh, nice clean vehicles. They wore nice clean uniforms. They held doors when folks walked in and out of delis. We went above and beyond on the experience side. Mm -hmm. We left places cleaner than they were when we got there. It was all those other things that made the client have a great experience. And that's really where the customer service started. Um, And I've taken that and, kind of parlayed it in all the way through, right? It's it's not so much about uh, telling somebody they're right or wrong. It's about giving them a great experience. When you first saw the light go on with a customer or when you noticed they noticed or how well they felt, did the light go on with you and you're like, okay, yeah, I, I see it now. I, I think I saw that very early. I think I think I just always knew that folks were, it was about the experience, right? We're in people's bedrooms, we're in people's Mm. closets, people's bathrooms, emptying stuff out of their cabinets. I mean, a very, very personal or emotional for a lot of people. When you're coming into their home, people want to feel like they're protected, Mm. not only their surfaces, right, but their relationship is protected. And that was just something we always uh, had a lot of high regard or value for, right? Uh, that picture might not look very expensive that you're taking down off the wall, but it could have a lot of sentimental, sentimental value. You know, value. Oh, yeah. There's so many different things that can go on. And Trinity talked about it before. You have 16 different transactions involved or 16 different people, <laughs> right? When you look at, you know, there's four or five people in an average house, there's four or five uh, employees in that home. Then you've got your own vendors that you deal with for parts, for equipment, for materials. You know, all of a sudden you have 20 people involved in one project. Uh, there's a lot of logistics that go in there to make sure everything goes the right way. But uh, everybody on the team has to know and understand that core of competency and understand that uh, that company value. Mm-hmm. So that's what makes it work more so than just me having that appreciation and knowing how I would do it if I was there. Our, our employees have to know that. I like when people kind of second or reinforce stuff we talked about on previous podcasts. That gives me a good warm feeling that maybe we do know what we're doing. <laughs> You're right. Or, Some we, days we know what we're yeah, doing. No, yeah. Today I was having a really shitty day and I was just like, 
oh, but it's podcast day. Yeah. And that instantly lifted my spirits and made mm-hmm. me feel excited. Yeah, this is my favorite day of the week right now because we have client meetings in the morning, B&I at noon, and then the podcast at 3. It just doesn't get any better than that for me. So anyways, uh, but something we talked about a couple podcasts ago, as a business, are you a transaction or are you an experience? We're an experience exactly. as far as I'm concerned. Even yeah. the painting was, and people don't think Mm-mm. that's experience, mm-hmm. but you get it because you talk about the customer. How do they feel? Sure. Nobody mm-hmm. sells that way. And in one, in, in one industry, you could be in somebody's home or outside of somebody's home for two weeks, right? That's, you're going to get to know those people, right? They're going to know <laughs> right. if they had a good experience or a bad experience. What we do now is more of a few hours at a time, right? And not multiple people in the house. So it's, it's almost more important to make sure that we're showcasing that ability because you get one shot at it. We get a few hours at it and that's it. So we want that customer to feel that way, not where you may be there for a full week and eh, well, they did something the other day, but I tell you what, the other four days they were great and I love these guys. Uh, we only get one shot at that. And so it's even more important that we're, we're showcasing that. Everything else after the fact should work as it's supposed to. And we have checks and balances to make sure. But the experience that they have uh, is very important. If I go out and meet with a client who says, it's very important that your technicians are wearing masks mm-hmm. and booties, and then our tech shows up and he's not wearing a mask or booty, well, we've just let him down before we even walked in the door. Right. Um, so those are the kind of details that we make sure get back to the techs and, and that I'm doing my job in order to provide them uh, the softball instead of the fastball, right? And that's what will show up on the five-star Yelp review. We loved them, but... Correct, <laughs> correct. I'm telling you what, it's not always the big things that set you apart. Oftentimes, it's just the attention to little details and the little things that make all the difference. I think last summer, so it's just starting to get to the point now where it's really hot outside. But one of the things that I make sure when I'm showing houses is that I have a little cooler with like cold waters and stuff because it's hot. And when you're going in all these houses, it's they don't always have air conditioning on because some of them are not occupied or they have it cranked at like 82 degrees and, you know, you're all sweaty and sticky. So little things can make a big difference when you're providing really good customer service. Absolutely. And that's what they, at the end of the day, that's usually what they remember to. Right. Yeah, you sold their house, but yeah, but the whole time, I mean, she did this for us. She did that for us. and Yeah. And you have to have that. Yeah, well, and it was just making me think as we're sitting here like, man, how do we provide even better client service to our coaching clients? Mm -hmm. Because I'm sure that there's even more things that we can do to wow. Um, We have one client that um, we've been working with, a coaching client, Mm -hmm. and I've been working with his team on how to just like blow the socks off of one of their um, web development clients. And it's not the big stuff. It's Mm. the little stuff. It's making sure that there's no typos. It's making sure that everything is buttoned up perfect. And that's not the overall arching thing. It's just the tiny little details that can make the biggest difference. Well, you made them have their staff meeting on Thursday. So they didn't have the staff meeting 10 minutes before the meeting with a client on Monday. Yes. Because uh, no, no. <laughs> made no sense to me. Because I'm yeah. like, well, what happens when we find out something wasn't done, and now we have to roll into this meeting unprepared? And mm-hmm. that's just not how. That's not how I roll with my clients. So yeah. we've put some things into place to really help their team function more smoothly, which ultimately is going to provide better client service. You and I were talking the other day about what people are getting. When they, when you talk, what what everybody thinks security means, mm-hmm. everybody's all over the place. We're talking about uh, Ring, mm-hmm. the camera doorbell. Mm-hmm. Everybody makes them now, correct? Right? Yep. That just tells you who's breaking in your house. <laughs> the, the cameras right. don't ever stop a no. breach. They're just going to record it, yeah. right? And uh, so that's one of the challenges that we have in, in the industry that we're in now. There's a lot of DIY out there, and uh, it serves a great purpose if that's what you're using it for uh, and not using it for talking to somebody who's standing at your front door. You know, the occasional package gets delivered. But the reality is we're not, we're not always watching those either, right? Mm-hmm. We get those alerts an hour, two hours later. Even here, we're sitting here in a podcast. I'm not checking my notifications. 
vacations. You know, and I know there's been some that have gone off since we've been sitting here. So uh, those are our, uh, you know, digital technology that a lot of folks have. Everybody's got sort of rebranded. Um, but uh, they do offer you the ability to be able to see who's at your front door. Which is big because if you have deliveries, mm -hmm. if you just want to know if you're sitting outside, if you're sitting in the den, mm -hmm. You just want to know who's knocking on your door, and if, if they, you want to know how fast the wind is blowing, so that's that. that so we, we, me and me and my judge, so we're I, we, Trinity is getting at the point I'm, I'm I'm desperately trying to make is that those doorbell cameras work eighty percent of the time. Right. There's a twenty percent window there where they're missing something or they're giving you the the what we call the false positives. Yes. You're getting the wind is blowing at the right time. Uh, the spider walks across it in the middle of the night. Uh, we talked about. Uh, UPS, right? I have a yeah. great mm -hmm. UPS guy. I wish he would work for us. He's always running. He's always hustling. He honks the horn before he even gets out of the van. He comes up to the door. He rings the doorbell. He waves to my doorbell camera. He wears a big sun hat. I catch him 100% of the time because not only it, he's quick with the motion, but he also rings the bell. So it's it's sort of a, a double way of catching him. Mm -hmm. When it comes to my Amazon person, they will stand there and take a picture. They're there long yep. enough for me to really catch right. and see. Yeah. Uh, our other our other delivery person, uh, you know, the one with the arrow in the middle with the EX at the end, yeah. uh, sometimes I think they throw it from 20 yards away. I don't, <laughs> I don't ever catch them. Uh, and so that that's a very real reality we tell clients when they do purchase them is that we don't manufacture manufacture these, right, or create this technology. It's it's yeah. what everybody's is, but we just want you to understand the expectations because expectations are everything. Right. Um, but, but they that's are. that's customer service right there is Correct. telling them that beforehand. Correct, right? So we, we have to balance where we want to earn that client's business, mm -hmm. but at the same time, you know, we can be too honest, right? And, and yeah. somebody else doesn't tell them that about their doorbell camera, right? So... No, you've never run across that, have you? Anyway, in our industry, there's yeah. a lot of that, yes, without I, a doubt. I'm surprised you're – do you guys have a ring doorbell or just – I um, don't know what package we, you have for my So knowledge. this is Scott's realm. Um, I love my husband because he takes care of all the techie stuff now mm -hmm. in the house, which is fantastic. So we have our security system, we have security cameras, and we have – we do have a ring oh, you doorbell. you do, because I had mm -hmm. to get it in. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. Yeah. Um, and all of those alerts, everything goes through his phone. The only thing that I have on my phone is the actual alarm system yeah. because when I leave, I can just, um, activate it from my phone, which. And, and so that I'm surprised your doorbell, cause your front door is not that far from the street. Your front not. yard's kind of short and narrow yeah right not real deep. And I'm surprised you don't get what cars go by or big trucks go by that it doesn't set that off. Um, I think sometimes it does. Usually, yeah. usually it, yeah. they're designed to pick up seven to 10 feet, whether right. or not, whether or not they're picking up seven to 10 feet is the big question right. because there's so many different scenarios. Every home is different. Mm -hmm. Every canvas is different. Every lighting is different. Um, you know, some folks like even in my house, I can pick up uh, oftentimes the UPS truck, uh, big trucks that come by the garbage trucks. Occasionally I'll catch them, yeah. uh, but I have an elevated porch. So it's really only those yeah, my high porch vehicles. Is elevated too. When it I wonder if that's okay. Yeah. That makes Sense. And we've had some clients that are close to the road and they do pick up a lot. So uh, there's sensitivity levels. And sometimes we're not afraid to tell a client this might not be the best solution. Uh, a, an exterior camera is always better than a doorbell camera. Mm -hmm. A doorbell camera is less expensive, right? And mm -hmm. it gives you more features because you have the two-way audio. But essentially, it, it never beats an exterior camera. And an exterior camera now has what we call analytics. It has the ability to tell you if it's a person, a vehicle, or an animal. Mm -hmm. It has the ability to do what we call a virtual tripwire. Uh, you can put right across your screen with your fingertips. If anyone crosses in or out of a certain line, it can also uh, trigger an event, uh, a recording event, or let you know that somebody has come by. So doorbells are less expensive, and they give you a lot. They're just very popular now. But just like in the case with you and Scott, you guys had a ring doorbell. We did. My my common sense approach to anything I do with sales or, or that honest uh, upfront approach is keep it. You paid for it. It's going to work independently of your security system, but side by side. Right. That's not going to stop the breach. You're just going to have another app. Since you paid for it, keep it, right? There's no yep. reason to pay us to replace yeah. something. Um, you're just going to have a separate app. So we're not afraid to tell folks when it comes to that, and especially cameras. Cameras, you, you used to have to call a security company when you wanted cameras. Now you can go to yeah. Best Buy, you can go on Amazon, you can buy fairly yeah. high quality cameras and, and a lot of them are battery operated and rely on your Wi-Fi, but they can be installed and, and off you go, you have cameras. The way we feel is 
those don't stop the breach. They don't stop anybody from getting hurt. They don't stop anybody from breaking into your home. Um, a lot of them are about convenience. We can look and see that my daughter's come home from the school bus. Mm -hmm. We can look and see that the package has been delivered. We can see when grandma drops off the little guy, right? We can see the dog, things like that. Um, that's where it's even more uh, more advantageous to a family mm -hmm. in that respect. And the reality is if you catch somebody doing something bad, unless you know who that person is, or unless the detective looking at that picture knows who that is, there's not a whole it heck of a lot. Really there's not a whole you. heck of a lot that can get done. <laughs> um, now it does give folks something to go on and it does give, uh, everyone else in the neighborhood uh, an idea of who might be out there, that kind of thing. Um, so it, it's not completely useless, but, uh, you know, we just caution everybody on, on what you're getting for the money and what's available. The last thing we want, and we just talked about this is, you know, somebody has a cup of coffee on Sunday walking through Costco and, and says, why did I pay Tom to do this when I could have done this? And the reality is they're going to say, cause Tom explained it to me and that's why I went that direction. Right. Just like with Scott, right? Yeah. We explained everything and Scott's got a com. You guys have a combination of the ring with, you even have Arlo's yeah. and a security system, mm -hmm. right? three different pieces there yep. that that protect your home and that was what made you comfortable mm -hmm. uh and some of those pieces you've already owned right so it made What's a lot arlo? of sense arlo is you got a... another dog no <laughs> but we did pick our next dog name so is it arlo no <laughs> we're, we're it's a debate so you guys can help me think it through but i have two names picked either clapton or seeger but i'm leaning towards seeger well yeah you're from michigan yeah yeah so, Mr. Slowhand, yeah, Mr. Light. Slowhand, or uh, yeah. what's he? What's he? The sil uh, what's it? Seager Silver is, Bullet, uh, sil Night Moves, yeah. yeah, Night Moves, yeah. But he, yeah. He, does he have a nickname? Turn the page. I don't. Uh, well, Silver Bullet Band. Silver I don't think. Bullet. He's uh, yeah. Silver Bullet yeah. Band. That's yeah. it. That's it. Well, it's funny because last week Clint Webb was on the show and his daughter's named Layla. No kidding. And I went Clapton fan. He goes, Oh yeah. Ah, <laughs> it's like, okay, very that makes cool. Sense. Very cool. Can you teach? How do you teach your employees customer service? you know, the way you want it done? Several different ways. We, we try to do meetings as consistently as possible. Um, and we're not always great at it when it comes to that. So a lot of stuff we do is over the phone or even FaceTime sometimes when we're out in the field. Um, we've had our technicians actually put together their own uh, employee handbook, if you will. Right. So they they started it and sort of created it. It got them to think about what they were doing in people's homes because it was almost like a 360 geez, I never thought about that, right? And I'm the front lines. I'm somebody that's mm -hmm. out in their home the first time. Um, so that was where things started. Uh, and then from there, we just kind of constantly fine tune it. When something comes up, even though it's not a big deal necessarily, it could be, and we see that, especially when we're protecting people's lives, essentially. Um, that's where we're just constantly updating that, right? Where people realize, okay, I see how that could turn into something. We'll, we'll, we'll adjust that. So that's, that's really where things started. Um, we... When I got involved with Brian, we had great customer service. We had great clients. We had great reviews. We had great staff. It was one of the reasons why I got involved. Um, on the other side, we didn't have a lot of that in a, in a formal procedure, right, right. Of, of exactly how that goes. We just had good quality people that wanted to make other people happy when they were there. And that's, we, we always have felt when it comes to even what you're talking about is higher attitude and trained skill. Oh, yeah. And that, that's something where when you meet any one of our people, you'll always say, that is a great person. I, I, I know I can trust that guy after talking to him or a woman for five minutes. So that's one of the biggest things that makes training easy. And we don't even, I think a lot of times we're constantly training and we don't think of it as training. We're just always practicing continuous improvement. Well, and Trinity talks about this with her staff that is out selling all her houses so she can go on cruises and <laughs> stuff like that. But it's important that they reflect what she wants. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And a lot of it is the why. It's not mm -hmm. the what. That's easy to show a house, relatively. Yeah. But it's the why. Why, it do you, is. why, Trinity, do we have to do these 12 procedures before we walk right. into a house? You know, we, we, when it comes to the techs, especially like Raphael is, is our main tech, right? And he's great. He might that's have even. came to my yeah, house. He might have yep. even been at your home. You know, whenever there's a question or whenever there is something that comes up in relation to customer service or even what we're doing, my answer to him almost always is, I trust you. Right. So given the ability for them to be able to understand the process and, and have some control over it uh, also is what uh, I think we empower our staff to make some of those decisions. And, and uh, you know, lo and behold, it's always worked out for us. That's great because you're not letting the monkey come back on your back. too. No. 
It's no. good management. And she's talked about that too, is him throwing it back to you. And yeah, but that's it works. It serves two purposes. Sure. One is you're not letting him do that, but two is he knows. Okay. My yeah. boss says buy him yeah. with me. Yeah. Well, the, is, the, I mean, then, then that's why we hired him, right? We, yeah. And we hired him to be him, right? We know that you've got this background in, in security, but that's not what we're hiring. We're, we're hiring you. No, I was just going to say when he was at our house, he was, you know, on time. He was professional. He was super helpful. He made sure to pull us in at the end and walk us through. Like, he, he definitely had a system that he was following, when he was in our home and I felt a hundred percent comfortable with him mm-hmm. being there. And I don't know, I thought it was, felt just pretty. And I think that's what you want your clients. Like it felt really easy. There was yep. nothing yeah. about it that I was like, Oh man, this is making it feel daunting. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You know, when we had our cleaning company, we would do uh, empty turnover houses, even though it was a commercial cleaning company. And they would always want me to come in before the electrician and stuff like that. And after I did it the first time and they called me back out, I'm like, then from then on, it's like, no, I need to be the last person in there. Because these, these dudes would just, they drill a hole in the wall and they and wouldn't they even don't clean, clean up. it anymore. up. It's like, yeah. come on, guys. Yeah. And stuff yeah. like that matters. Yep. It does. So homeowners, moms, wives, they see that. And it pisses them off, and it should. Some of them do. Some of them don't. <laughs> I've been in some pretty disgusting houses. Yeah. None of my own clients' homes, by no. the way. Right. But other houses I've seen. Yeah. My clients are all perfect and perfect at keeping, <laughs> taking care of their houses. <laughs> How often do you have to use your customer service skills with your wife and kids? You know, I've got a great wife and I've got great kids. Here we go. They, 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 they you really, know, they really are good podcast. You know, <laughs> you know, we've had a spike and we've gotten pretty busy here with a lot of things that have going on. And, and it's easy for me just to turn it on work mode. You know, tonight I'll be home, you know, after eight, if I had to guess, maybe eight 30, uh, you know, wife takes care of tennis. She takes care of ice hockey. She takes care of dinner. She takes care of homework. She takes care of, you know, the pets. She takes care of uh, everything. Right. So I mean that when I say that and, and my kids, they're, uh, they're, they're a reflection of me and my wife. So I feel like I have a, a leg up in, in communicating with them and how I speak to them. But the one thing I think my dad was always that way is every one of our kids are different and I parent them differently. Mm-hmm. Right. And my daughter's got a lot of things she's very good at and some things she might struggle with. My son is, you know, same way. So, um, I think, uh, customer service at home, they're the ones usually uh, giving me the business, right? I, I did a great job at doing the dishes. Yeah. I just didn't put them away, you know, things, Correctly, like, things, yeah. like, things like that, you know. Uh, but uh, for the most part, I mean, they make, they make things go. And uh, with school being out and my 12-year-old daughter being home, she's taken on a lot more responsibility. She's grown up very quickly uh, through this whole thing. Um, so it's, uh, it's been, uh, it, you know, it's been a crazy time for sure. He has the best setup, grandparents right around the corner. Yes. Ooh. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, if we ever have the blessing to get pregnant, I'm pretty sure I could convince Scott's parents to move up here. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 That's the goal. Yeah. And you'll find them the perfect house. I will find them the perfect house, but not too close. Not but close too close, enough, but right? Close. Yeah. I mean, I'd say within like a 10 minute mm. drive would be perfect. Yours are what, right around the corner? Yeah, they're uh, two. I think it's less than two miles. Yeah. I think and it's only because we got to drive out of our neighborhood and go wrap around. But if, yeah. if I could draw a straight line, I think it's, you know, 1.7, 1.8 miles. They're, they're about two miles away, something like that. And great grandma's about the same. Uh, my sister's about the same. Um, and we've All got these trans aunts and uncles, everybody. Mm-hmm. Yes. Lots of, <laughs> and now we, we stop telling everybody how nice it is here. Everybody can stay where they are. Now. We've got everybody, got everybody we need. <laughs> Too many people moving into county. Yeah, we don't have room yeah. for you. <laughs> and we don't need we don't need all those New Yorkers coming down here. I love working with New Yorkers. <laughs> they come down here and they're like, "What? The yeah. taxes are so cheap. The houses are so cheap. I love yeah. it." Yeah. <laughs> well, we have really enjoyed having you on our episode today. Um, thank you for imparting so much of your wisdom. Yeah. You definitely um, live and breathe and teach the etiquette that you speak about, which is awesome. We appreciate that. Thank you. We're going to start a new ending here. We are. We are. Two things. Uh Uh-oh. Two nuggets of customer service you're going to lay on other business owners. 
You know, I mentioned the one, um, and I and I really think it's important to you re- mentioned a bunch. Which one's re- one? Readily admitting your mistakes is a yeah. is a is a big thing, and making sure folks understand that you know how it feels as either a homeowner or as just a person, um, and and how you're going to make it right. Those are those are very important, I think, when it comes to customer service. And the second biggest thing is delivering what you promise. And if you are going to, you know, under promise and over deliver, that's even better, but you need to at least deliver what you promised. And if your staff isn't meeting the expectations that I promised and they're not delivering it, then there's, there's a problem there. Um, whether or not they give you a bad review or not, that's still not good for your business. Uh, and we base our business on that, not necessarily the reviews. Well, speaking of reviews, I think that our listeners should go out there and review us. And if yes. there's any reason that you can think of that you wouldn't give us five stars, call Mike. please call Mike first <laughs> or call me. And we would love to provide some excellent listener client service by fixing any of our freaking mistakes that we could possibly make. But hopefully we don't have any. So please like, share, review, subscribe. And it would make us absolutely delighted. And I want to give a big shout out to Michaela Ramos, um, who reached out to me after listening to one of our podcasts. Um, I have not met her yet, but I'm going to be meeting her in person soon here. So we love when our listeners reach out to us. We like to network with you and get to know you. So if you are a fan and want to talk with Mike or I, you can find us info at wiredtochange.com. What's the website real quick? iwatchsecurity.com. All right, folks, if you're in the triangle area, Tom Adams, you just heard what kind of customer service it'll give you. If you want it done right, and if you're a customer of a competitor, it's the middle of June. If you're a customer of one of his competitors, please like give CPI. a call. He'll be able to take care of you. <laughs> he can't say it, but we can say it for and him. That's what we're here for. We'll do the talking for you. So, And we'll see you next time on our Wired to Change podcast.